There is a world apart from the world we live in. A world that is cold and wet and beautiful. Our world above is full of light and life. It is where we crawl to grow, to breathe. But there is life under. In the under where life began. We have forgotten where we came from and what we left behind. The beauties of that world in the blue and the green. Witnessed by all and noticed by few. Life continues, far away from the gaze of man and woman. A beautiful existence that exists apart from us. From the tiniest plankton to the largest whale, we are worlds apart and closer than ever. Where the seals play like dogs and the porpoises surf the waves, where the cephalopods dash and the crabs stroll. There is a bounty of life we choose to ignore. Our closest neighbours and most distant aliens. There are such creatures you never thought possible, that these colours could exist where human eyes are blind. A shimmering sea mouse, a flamboyant flame shell, beauty that deserves to live. But even hidden below the waves, the under cannot escape us. We take what is not ours and leave what we do not want. Cutting down a forest for the sake of a leaf, dredging the kelp and destroying a home. When escape from a net means death by poison, a stomach full of plastic, feathers weighed down like lead. There is life, under, but for how much longer? first fished this 25 years ago we could catch anything now we can't we can't even catch the bottom properly because it's just literally turned to gravel and stones nothing there at all there used to be a lot of scallop dredges we used to be in here all the time but now you might get one a year it'll come in it'll do a couple of quick sort of tours and they're obviously getting nothing and they just go away again it's not recovering, the, the grounds that used to be dredged. So what happened was we changed from a, a mixed fishery fishing, overfished it, to basically dragging the seabed for the last species, the prawns and the scallops. What we see as divers um, is that uh, the seabed is damaged both by trawling and by scallop dredging. These two methods are incredibly destructive types of fishing because they scrape away the seabed. It means that habitat is lost, so particularly around Arran, seagrass beds, merle beds, um, and that means that you don't have, or we don't have, habitat for juvenile fish um, to grow in, protected. Uh, we don't have uh, habitat for their food to develop in and for 
our environment and ecosystem to be resilient through biodiversity. Since they reopened the, the three mile limit, fishing has been going backwards and it took roughly 10 years to take an area where you could catch all sorts of species and all sorts of things down to you just could hardly even get your hooks to dig in the bottom because there was nothing there and then you really realise you've got to do something. You would have to stop dredging full stop because there's no point leaving it for a year then have one boat come and just turn it over again to be left alone for another year. It'll never recover like that, it needs to be a complete closure. Instead of putting temporary exclusion zones or temporary bands, it would just have to be a complete closure because otherwise it's just not long enough, it needs years to be left alone, not just a few months. It actually wasn't that difficult when they started to show photographs and video of the damage that was being done and encourage then people to come on board with supporting sustainable fishing rather than damaging fishing. There are still some elements that, of the community who will not support it because they think we're anti-fishing um, or anti-salmon farms, for example, uh, open cage salmon farms. We're not anti-fishing, we actually just want a beautiful and sustainable and biodiverse environment, a productive environment for everybody. Coast has been around for over 20 years and we work really hard to protect the waters around Arran and the Firth of Clyde. We're trying to restore the habitats to their once healthy states and bring back the species that we're now missing. In one metre of water here you'll see more living creatures than you could imagine once you look deeply and start to look at the small ones. And it's fantastic the fishing, being able to just uh, catch fish and eat them but also the, as a local fisherman it's very keen on conservation. We fought really really hard in our local community to bring in Scotland's first community-led no-take zone which is in the north side of Lamlash Bay here. It's a small zone where absolutely no extraction by any fishing means whatsoever is allowed. This means that the habitats and the species are all heavily protected. It's the highest level of marine protection that any area can be afforded. And on the back of the success of our no-take zone, we pushed for a marine protected area. What we're campaigning for at the moment is to bring back a three mile limit for trawling and impose a three mile limit on dredging, which there never was. Policing the marine protected area and all the rules and regulations around it falls to Marine Scotland Compliance who currently have one fisheries patrol boat for the entire coastline of Scotland and two compliance planes that can fly around. So there's money going into one big like minesweeper sized vessel rather than vessels that can act quickly and respond to, to calls that are in. There's a challenge met by conservationists uh, marine conservationists to try and make the animals and make people think about the animals out in our seas and want to protect them just as much as protecting animals on land. Take the WWF for example, they have a panda as their logo, they get loads of supporters. People can see this cute fluffy animals. A lot of the animals in the sea aren't cute and fluffy. Yes you get dolphins, yes you get whales, they're big, they're charismatic and seals and otters, people can see those. But the species we at Coast are really trying to protect are ones that are much deeper down. We all have destroyed the under and we all must save it. For ourselves and for the wonders below. These beauties persist through all we have done, but they cannot survive without our help. Hidden below the waves, changes begin to save the creatures on which we depend. Little difference to us, we don't even notice. Sustainable seafood and reusable resources. The world above is dry and warm. It is where we live and laugh and grow. But we share this earth with another world. And with our help, under will survive.